Hey everyone, the wait is over. We are in the final chapter of this book. This is part 10a, Modern Icons. Part 1. But before we start, make sure to like and subscribe. In pairs, you and your friend, take the quiz. Choose A, B or C. What do you know about Steve Jobs? This is your gig. Take your time. Very good. If you have done it, I need you to listen and check. Okay, let's see. 5.28 1. Steve Jobs was born in San Francisco in 1955. 2. He dropped out of Reed College in Oregon after just six months. 3. His first job was with Atari, the video game company. 4. The Apple Macintosh was the first successful computer to use a mouse. 5. He co-founded Pixar in 1986, the company that produced Toy Story. 6. He died of cancer of the pancreas in 2011. 7. He was only 56 years old when he died. Well done. That was a very good start. And rest in peace, Steve Jobs. He did a great job in the information technology and computers. Great. Now, look at these photos. Hmm. Guess what the connection is between each of the things, people or places and Steve Jobs. Take your time. You can use Google to help you. I'll be waiting. A few moments later. Now, everyone, I need you to read the paragraphs 1 to 5 and check your guesses. Then we'll read it together. Again, my time to wait. A few minutes later. Great. Now let's read it together. Number 1. The Macintosh Classic was the personal computer that was made by Apple in 1990. Oh, it's like 33 years ago from right now that I'm recording this. It had a 9-inch monochrome screen and a 4 megabyte MB memory. It was cheaper than earlier com Apple computers and very easy to use. It was their first commercially successful computer. All right. Number two, so we can say it was, it was the first commercially successful computer made by Apple, the Macintosh Classic. Number two, Stefan Wozniak is the American computer engineer and programmer whose computer designs became the original Apple I and Apple II computers. He and Steve Jobs became friends when they were both working at Hewlett Packard. They started making computers in Jobs' parents' garage. And together they founded Apple Computers, now Apple Incorporated, in 1976. So Stephen Wozniak, he founded Apple Computers, now Apple Inc., with Steve Jobs. Mona Simpson is Steve Jobs' sister. Jobs was adopted when he was born. But in the 1980s, he found his biological mother who told him that he had a sister, Mona, and Steve met for the first time in 1985, when she was 25 and he was 30. And they became very close. They kept their relationship secret for a year until Mona introduced Steve as her brother at the party that she gave to celebrate the publication of her first novel, Anywhere But Here. So, Mona Simpson, she's Steve Jobs' sister. Mountain View. Mountain View is the city in California where Steve Jobs grew. He was born in San Francisco and was adopted by Paul and Clara Jobs. When he was six years old, the family moved to Mountain View, which was becoming a center for electronics. People began to call the area Silicon Valley because silicon is used to manufacture electronic parks. Okay, so it's the city in the U.S. where Steve Jobs grew up. Number five, this is the logo that was designed by Jonathan Mack, a Chinese design 
student from Hong Kong as a tribute to Steve Jobs when he died. The design which used Jobs' uh, silhouette co incorporated into the bite of uh, white Apple logo became a worldwide internet sensation. The teenager said that Jobs had inspired him to become a designer. All right, so it's the logo which was designed as a tribute to Steve Jobs when he died. All right, you did great. So this is all the information you need to know about Apple Inc. and Steve Jobs. All the way to the most boring part of our lesson today. I'm kidding. You're, you're gonna love it. Grammar, relative clauses. What are they? Look at these words. Who, whose, which, that, or where. In some cases, two, an two answers are possible. I need you to fill in the blanks with these words. Okay, let's do it together. The Macintosh Classic was the personal computer that was made by Apple in 1990. Number two, Steve Wozniak is the American computer designer who founded Apple Computers with Steve Jobs and whose computer designs became the original Apple I and Apple II computers. Number three, Mona introduced Steve as her brother at the party that or which she gave to celebrate the publication of her first novel. Number four, Mountain View is the area in California where Steve Jobs grew up. Jonathan Max design, which used Jobs' silhouette, incorporated into the bite of a white Apple logo, became a worldwide internet sensation. Okay, very good, everybody. So these are uh, the connectors, who, where, that, which, whose, we call them relative clauses. I need you to answer these questions with your friends. In which phrase is the relative pronoun not necessary? Take your time. It's phrase three. Okay, it's not necessary. In which sentence could you leave out the relative clause, but this sentence will still make sense? It's still okay. It's sentence five. Look, without which it still has the meaning. Very good. Now to the main gate. My friends, listen. 5.29 1. Julia is the woman who works in the office with me. It's a self-help book that teaches you how to relax. That's the house where I was born. 2. Is Frank the man whose brother plays for the Lakers? It's a plant whose leaves change color in spring. 3. I just got a text from the girl I met on the flight to Paris. This is the new phone I bought yesterday. All right, very good. So we call these defining relative clauses and they give the extra information that you need. And I've given the information here to give important information about a person, place, or a thing. Use a relative clause. Okay? And you use the relative pronoun who, that, for people, that, which, for things or animals, and where, for places. Yeah? And you cannot omit, you cannot remove who, which, that, where in this kind of clause. Very good. Use whose to mean of who or of which. Okay, we have this. For example, it's a plant whose leaves change color in the spring, right? And who, which, and that can be omitted, can be removed when the verbs in the main clause and relative clause have a different subject. For example, she's the tall girl I met on the plane. Yeah? And where and whose can never be omitted, can never be removed okay well done but there's more follow me non-defining relative clauses listen i'll explain 5.30 this painting which was painted in 1860 is worth millions of dollars last week i visited my aunt who's nearly 90 years old burford 
where my grandfather was born, is a beautiful little town. My neighbor, whose son goes to my son's school, has just remarried. All right, very good. So, non-defining relative clauses give extra non-essential information. So it means that information is not that necessary, right? So, non-defining relative clauses give extra, often non-essential information in a sentence. If this clause is omitted, the sentence will still make sense. It means that if you remove that clause, the sentence is okay, all right? It still has meaning, all right? Non-defining relative clauses must go between commas or a comma and a period. In these clauses, you can't leave out the relative pronoun, who, which, etc. In these clauses, you can't use that instead of who or which. All right, very good. Take your time, study this, and let's practice together as always i have two sets of exercises my friends all right so a complete with who which that where or whose okay for example mountain view is the area where steve jobs grew up okay and add commas where necessary in the sentences for example caroline who lives next door to me is beautiful all right, very good. This is your gig. Stop the video, take your time, and do it yourself. I'll be waiting. No help from anyone. This is your test. This is your gig. Very good. Now let's do it together. Rob and Corina, who have twins, often need a babysitter. Number two, the White House, where the President of the United States lives, is in Washington, D.C. Number three, the sandwich, that or which, you can use both of them, made me yesterday was delicious. Number four, the woman who lived here before us was a waiter, a writer, I'm sorry. Number five, Stieg Larsen, whose books formed the Millennium Trilogy, died in 2004. Number six, my computer is a lot faster than the one that you bought or which you bought. All right. Number seven, the Mona Lisa, which has been damaged several times, is now displayed behind bulletproof glass. Number eight, look, that's the woman whose dog bit me last week. Number nine, on our last vacation, we visited Stratford upon A1 where Shakespeare was born. Number 10. We all went to the game except Marianne, who doesn't like basketball. Number 11. The man who you saw at the party was my boyfriend. Number 12. That's the park where I learned to ride a bike. All right, very good. Now, number one, this is the place where John crashed his car. It's okay. Number two, the museum that we visited yesterday was amazing it's okay beijing which was one of the largest biggest cities hosted the 2008 olympic games you can say beijing comma which was one of the world's biggest cities hosted the olympic games now look if you remove this part does it still make sense beijing hosted the 2008 olympic games all right so this is what we call as non-essential. If you remove it, nothing happens. All right? That's why you need the comma. Right? Very good. Michael Jackson's Thriller, which was released in 1982, was one of the best-selling albums of the 80s. Okay, let's see. Michael Jackson's Thriller, which was released in 1982. Okay, so if you remove this part, it still it makes sense. These are the shoes that I'm wearing to the party tonight. It's okay. Sally and Joey, got, who got married last year, are expecting their first baby. Now, you can put it in a comma. It's not essential information. And that's all there is to it for the relative clauses. Defining, non-defining. Now, it's time for some writing. All right, read the text about Mark Zuckerberg. Then, I need you to rewrite the text with the extra information. Sentences 
A to F. These sentences. Okay, let me give you an example. For example, Mark Zuckerberg, the American computer program, was one of the founders of Facebook. Okay, I'm going to use A. Look. Mark Zuckerberg, the American computer programmer, who was born in New York in 1984, was one of the founders of Facebook. All right. The rest is yours. I'll be waiting for you. You have all the time in the world. Do exactly as I did. We practiced all of this in the previous section. Grammar. Your turn. 12 seconds later. Great. You're back. The rest is ours. Let's do it together. In his teens, he began to write software programs as a hobby. After high school, he went to Harvard where he studied computer science and sociology, right? While he was there, he created a website called FaceMash, which allowed students to share photos. It was shut down by the university, but it inspired him to create Facebook, which he launched from his room in 2004. He left Harvard and moved to California with Dustin Moskowitz. I'm so bad with names. Who, hadn't, who had been his roommate. Together, they made Facebook an international success. In 2012, Zuckerberg married Priscilla Chan, who he had dated for nine years. All right, great, very good. So, that's how you can write it. Maybe mine is not perfect, but I did my best. Follow me. All the way to part four. Listening, you made it so far. Great American design icons. Some of the things that are considered the best in American design. Okay, first, look at the photos, all right? You can see four examples of American design. What are they? Do you have any idea? What do you know about them? Speak with your friends. See if they know. Mm, very good. So now, I need you to listen to a professor talk about them. And complete the sentences one to four. Let's do it together. 5.31 Barbie Until the late 1950s, most American girls played with baby dolls, which often limited their imaginations to mother or caregiver roles. At around the same time, Ruth Handler noticed that her preteen daughter was playing with paper dolls, giving them adult roles such as actresses or secretaries. On a trip to Europe, Ruth saw an adult figure doll in Germany and brought several of them back to the US. Handler had the idea that girls could expand their imagination and play acting roles with a doll that looked like an adult. So she and engineer Jack Ryan redesigned the doll for the U.S. market and called her Barbie, after Ruth's daughter, Barbara. The first Barbie dolls were produced in 1959 and sold over 350,000 in the first year. Barbie is still popular today, and billions have been sold around the world since 1959. Mattel Inc., the company that produces Barbie, reports that 90% of American girls between the ages of 3 and 10 have a Barbie doll. The Chrysler Building The Chrysler Building has been one of the most iconic New York City landmarks since it was completed in 1930. Architect William Van Allen designed the Art Deco building for Walter P. Chrysler, who owned the automobile company Chrysler Corporation. In fact, Van Allen modeled many of the building's decorative features using Chrysler car parts as inspiration. For example, the decorations on the outside of the building for the 31st floor are fashioned after engine parts from a 1929 Chrysler car. Today, the Chrysler Building is still considered one of the best examples of Art Deco architecture in the U.S. In fact, it was voted New York City's favorite building in 2005 by Skyscraper Museum. In addition, the building appears regularly in movies and TV shows that film in New York City. The Love Sculpture 
In 1965, artist Robert Indiana had an idea for a painting with the word love as the main focus. He decided to break the word up into two lines, putting the L-O on top of the V-E. He then tilted the O a little, and an iconic American design was born. In fact, it became so popular that the Museum of Modern Art and the United States Postal Service asked Indiana to create versions of his love painting for cards and stamps. In the early 1970s, Indiana made a series of love sculptures for display in public parks. The first of these love sculptures was placed in New York City on the corner of 6th Avenue and 55th Street. Additional love sculptures were placed in New Orleans, Philadelphia, Vancouver, Tokyo, and Singapore, as well as many other cities. Unfortunately, Indiana didn't make much money from his love paintings and sculptures. He never signed his paintings or applied for copyright, so he didn't have legal protection against the many imitations of his work. Air Jordan Sneakers when Michael Jordan started playing basketball for the Chicago Bulls in 1984, he had special Nike sneakers designed for him by Peter Moore. These sneakers were called the Air Jordan 1, or more simply, Air Jordans. They were red and black, the Chicago Bulls colors. Because the sneakers did not have any white on them, Jordan was fined $5,000 by the National Basketball Association each time he wore them for a game. Every year since then, Nike has created a new pair of Air Jordans to sell. In 1987, Tinker Hatfield took over the design responsibilities for these sneakers, and he has been associated with them ever since. Hatfield introduced the Jumpman logo on the sneakers, which is a silhouette of Michael Jordan dunking a basketball with his legs spread wide. In 2010, Hatfield designed the Jordan 2010s to celebrate the sneakers' 25th anniversary. All right, very good, everybody. That was a great piece of history over there. So Ruth Handler was the woman who... Designed the Barbie doll. Number two, William Van Allen was the man who designed the Chrysler building. And Robert Indiana is the man who designed the love sculpture. And number four, Peter Moore and Tinker Hatfield are the men who designed the Nike Air Jordan. Very good. You did great. Now I need you to listen again and answer the question. For example, which icon is the most recent, is the oldest, all right? This is your gig again. Let's go. 5.31 Barbie Until the late 1950s, most American girls played with baby dolls, which often limited their imaginations to mother or caregiver roles. At around the same time, Ruth Handler noticed that her preteen daughter was playing with paper dolls, giving them adult roles such as actresses or secretaries. On a trip to Europe, Ruth saw an adult figure doll in Germany and brought several of them back to the U.S. Handler had the idea that girls could expand their imagination and play acting roles with a doll that looked like an adult. So she and engineer Jack Ryan redesigned the doll for the U.S. market and called her Barbie, after Ruth's daughter, Barbara. The first Barbie dolls were produced in 1959 and sold over 350,000 in the first year. Barbie is still popular today, and billions have been sold around the world since 1959. Mattel Inc., the company that produces Barbie, reports that 90% of American girls between the ages of 3 and 10 have a Barbie doll. The Chrysler Building The Chrysler Building has been one of the most iconic New York City landmarks since it was completed in 1930. 
architect William Van Allen designed the Art Deco building for Walter P. Chrysler, who owned the automobile company Chrysler Corporation. In fact, Van Allen modeled many of the building's decorative features using Chrysler car parts as inspiration. For example, the decorations on the outside of the building for the 31st floor are fashioned after engine parts from a 1929 Chrysler car. Today, the Chrysler building is still considered one of the best examples of Art Deco architecture in the U.S. In fact, it was voted New York City's favorite building in 2005 by Skyscraper Museum. In addition, the building appears regularly in movies and TV shows that film in New York City. The Love Sculpture in 1965, artist Robert Indiana had an idea for a painting with the word love as the main focus. He decided to break the word up into two lines, putting the L-O on top of the V-E. He then tilted the O a little, and an iconic American design was born. In fact, it became so popular that the Museum of Modern Art and the United States Postal Service asked Indiana to create versions of his love painting for cards and stamps. In the early 1970s, Indiana made a series of love sculptures for display in public parks. The first of these love sculptures was placed in New York City on the corner of 6th Avenue and 55th Street. Additional love sculptures were placed in New Orleans, Philadelphia, Vancouver, Tokyo, and Singapore, as well as many other cities. Unfortunately, Indiana didn't make much money from his love paintings and sculptures. He never signed his paintings or applied for copyright, so he didn't have legal protection against the many imitations of his work. Air Jordan Sneakers when Michael Jordan started playing basketball for the Chicago Bulls in 1984, he had special Nike sneakers designed for him by Peter Moore. These sneakers were called the Air Jordan 1, or more simply, Air Jordans. They were red and black, the Chicago Bulls colors. Because the sneakers did not have any white on them, Jordan was fined $5,000 by the National Basketball Association each time he wore them for a game. Every year since then, Nike has created a new pair of Air Jordans to sell. In 1987, Tinker Hatfield took over the design responsibilities for these sneakers, and he has been associated with them ever since. Hatfield introduced the Jumpman logo on the sneakers, which is a silhouette of Michael Jordan dunking a basketball with his legs spread wide. In 2010, Hatfield designed the Jordan 2010s to celebrate the sneakers' 25th anniversary. Okay, very good. Now check your answers with your friends. So which icon is the most recent Air Jordan sneakers? And which one is the oldest? Chrysler building. Which icon has been used in many different products? Love. And which icon was named after a family member? Barbie. And number five. Which icon didn't make its designer much money? Love. Which icon had more than one designer? Air Jordan sneakers. Which icon was the result of a trip to Europe? Barbie. And which icon used car parts as inspiration for decorations the chrysler building now i ask you which of the four do you find the most attractive design what would you consider to be examples of iconic design in your country okay answer based on your country and the place you were born well done and all the way to my favorite part speaking First, everybody, look at these categories. Very good. Write the names of people, things, or places in as many of the circles as you can. All right? For example, a famous or dead person who you admire. A famous living person that you admire. 
an iconic landmark that you really like, a country whose design you admire, an everyday object that you own that you think has a beautiful design, an object that you would like to own that you think has a beautiful design, or a DVD cover, movie poster, or book cover that you think has a great design. Very good. Take your time. Write as many items as possible. Very good. Now, in groups or with your partner, talk about your people, things, and places, and explain why you admire them. Why are they special to you all the way to part six vocabulary and pronunciation compound nouns word stress look compound nouns what are they we often put two nouns together where the first noun describes the second one for example an album cover the cover of an album or the subway map the map of the subway Compound nouns can be two words, for example, tourist attraction, or one word, for example, website. Okay, now you know the definition. It's okay. Match a noun from column A with a noun from column B, all right? To make compound nouns. So you have to choose one from A, choose from B, and make them. This is your gig. Take your time and do it. And after you've done it, I need you to listen and check. Let's go. 5.32 Soccer field Speed camera Sunglasses Town hall Bookcase Classmate Profile picture all right, very good. Now, I have a question. Which noun is usually stressed more in the compound nouns? The first one or the second one? Give me your idea. Think it over. Yeah, the strong stress usually falls on the first word. Soccer field. Speed camera. Yeah, and that's all there is to it. But we're not done. The main challenge is yet ahead. Okay, my friends. Here is your challenge. For example, what kind of job do you have if you only work 20 hours a week? You have to answer with compound nouns, the thing which I taught you earlier, right? For example, it's part-time, yeah? Part-time. The rest is yours. I'll be waiting. Six and a half hours later. All right, you're back. Number two, what do you need to have before you can get on a plane? A boarding pass. Number three, what might you have to pay if you park in a bus lane? A parking fine or a parking ticket. Number four, what should you put on when you get into a car? A seat belt. All right. Number five, what do you call a long line of cars that can't move? A traffic jam. What do you need to book if you want to play tennis with someone? A tennis court. All right. Number seven. Where do, you, where do people go if they want to watch a basketball or a handball game? A sports arena. Number eight. What do you call the noise a phone makes? A ringtone. Number nine, what kind of books or movies are about the future and often outer space? A science fiction, or we say sci-fi, right? Number ten, what do you call a school that is paid for, by, paid, paid for by the government? A public school. Number eleven, if you are an ele in an elevator and you press two, where do you want to go? To the second floor. And what device do you use when you want to transfer files from one computer to another? A flash drive. You did great. That's all there is to it for the compound words. And another practice done. Well done, everybody. We're going to finish this book and start with the next book. Our challenge never finishes and you'll be seeing my face more. I promise you. If you haven't liked or subscribed, 
hit that subscribe button. Don't be shy and share my videos to your friends who need to learn. One more thing, I have also included the slides in the description section. So if you need it, you know where to get it. See ya.